हेलो लर्नर्स माय नेम इज़ विनीता धवन टुडे माय टॉपिक इज कॉम्पिटेंसी बेस्ड अप्रोच कॉम्पिटेंसी बेस्ड अप्रोच इज वन ऑफ द अप्रोच अमंग द अप्रोचेज टू टीचिंग एंड लर्निंग नाउ बिफोर गोइंग टू टेल यू अबाउट द डिटेल ऑफ दिस टॉपिक आई वॉन्ट टू गिव यू इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट दिस एवरी चाइल्ड इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम अनदर इन हिज ओन वेज ऑफ लर्निंग अ चाइल्ड अडॉप्ट डिफरेंट वेज ऑफ लर्निंग डिपेंडिंग अपॉन प्लेस एंड टाइम so it is a very challenging task for the teacher to teach taking into consideration the diverse ways of learning there is no single method that facilitate the learning of each and every child so a teacher needs to know how to combine different methods and make suitable variations now approaches to learning and teaching there are five approaches to learning and teaching the first is teacher centered approach the second is student centered approach the third is learner centered approach the fourth one is competency based approach and the fifth is constructive approach now the competency based approach a class is a group of students nearly of the same age controlled by a teacher accommodated within the specified period of time there are three key aspects of the classroom teacher student and the subject matter the ultimate aim is to enable the students to acquire knowledge and understanding of the concepts now competency based approach before going into detail about this topic competency based approach first i want to tell you what is competency there is no unique definition of the term competency but there are some statements which tells us tells us about what is competency competency is essential skill knowledge attitude and behavior to perform a real world activity it is essential skill that needs to be effective learner it is a skill performed under specific conditions and specific standard it is one of the characteristic of an individual for the successful performance it is a clearly defined and measurable activity now if we talk about the nature of competency we can say there are four points under the nature of competency the first is achievability the second is measurability third is communicability and the fourth last one is appropriateness now we will define all these four points the first is achievability what is achievability achievability refers to skill knowledge attitude and behavior that can be achieved the second is measurability this competency is defined and hence it can be measured this is the second nature of the competency now if you talk about the third this is communicability communicability means that the competency is understood by everyone concerning teacher and the student now if the fourth one that is appropriateness what is appropriateness it means that it have different standard or levels depending upon the characteristics of a learner now if you talk about the competencies at primary level as you all know what is a primary level primary level is the level of class 1 to 5 grade 1 to 5 now if we talk about the competencies of the primary level we can say these are three the first is language competency second is mathematic competencies and the third is environmental studies competency now we will study these three competencies in detail first is language competency now we can say that what is language competencies we can take the example with different classes here like if we talk about the class 3 we are talking here about the primary level class 3 means if a student is able to speak with correct pronunciation then we can say that it is a language competency of class 3 student now if we talk about class 4 student after reading the text if he is able to answer questions like since or because then we can say that it is a class 4th level competency means a student of class 4th has a language competency now for the class 5th we can here take the two examples like if a student read print and handwriting freely class 5th student we are talking then he has the language competency in the another example what we can take if a student take the dictation with the punctuation marks then we can say that the class 5 student has the language competencies now going to the second type of competencies at the primary level these are the mathematics competencies here also the same one for the class 1 what we can say if a student count the items 1 to 20 with objects and pictures then we can say that the student has the mathematics competencies if we talk about the higher classes means class 4th or 5th in class 4th 
if a student is able to draw the angles of different measures with the help of protector then when we can say that the student has a mathematics competencies on the other hand if we talk about the class 5th student about the mathematics competencies we can take two examples here like the first is use of unitary method you know what is unitary method unitary method is the cost of one is this and then we can find the cost of many things in the same way if we have the total cost of all the items then we can find out the cost of one item this is the unitary method if the student is able to do this then we can say the student has the mathematics competencies in the another example if the student is able to find the average of the given data here we can say if he is able to find out the average height of the given data from the given data then we can say he has the mathematics competencies and how the averages find out averages find out sum of all elements divided by the total number of elements this is the average if a student is able to do that then he has the mathematics competencies now if we talk about the third competency that is the environmental studies competencies we here we can take the examples of different classes like in the class 1 if the student is showing courtesy to elders peers family members and other neighbors then we can say the class 1 student has the environmental studies competencies if we talk about class 3 for the higher classes 3 4 and 5 in class 3 is what a student can do a student can list the occupation that produces the daily need articles if he prepare the list then we can say he has environmental studies competencies in the same way for class 4 if a student is able to do simple experiment how to purify the drinking water then we can say that he has environmental studies competencies in class 5 if a student is able to define or identify the physical features of the map and he is able to describe them then we can say the student has the environmental studies competencies here i have used the word skill or competency these are the two terms i have used but you should know what is skill and what is competency means there should be no confusion between these two terms these two two terms are different from each other we will define these two terms like first is skill what is skill a skill is a task or a group of tasks performed it includes the motor functions and manipulation in instruments and equipments we can take here the example suppose a student add quickly and correctly this is his knowledge based skill on the second example if the student orderly behavior at home and school then we can say he has the attitude based skill now if we define the term competency or we can say the difference comp what is competency so competency is not just a skill it is a skill to be performed at a prescribed level of efficiency we include mastery in this means mastery in skills means high standard of performance this is the competency here we can take one example and we can make it clear what is mastery and skill we can take the example of class 3 student a class 3 student can do addition of two digit two numbers without carrying over now in this case what is the mastery if a student add 16 items out of 20 items and each item carry one mark means if he does the 80% of the task in the stipulated period of time or achieve 16 marks out of 20 marks then we can say he has attained mastery level or competency in the skill this is the mastery now one concept is there that is minimum levels of learning it is somewhat related to the mastery learning now what is the minimum level of learning it is also called mll now what is it it was recommended by npe 1986 npe is national policy on education 1986 it was then that time it was recommended it was laid down for the primary school level for the three school subjects the first is languages the second is mathematics and third is environmental studies now what is done in this competencies are arranged in hierarchical order and the mastery of each competency is required to move to the next competency means if the student does not master the first competency he cannot move to the next competency mastery learning strategy is recommended with aim to achieve minimum level competencies now cyclical method is followed in this what is the cyclical method this is first a teacher plans then he teaches then he take test then after taking the test 
If there is shortcomings, then he reteach and then he take the retest. Now there are some points which should be taken into consideration while adopting this approach, means competency based approach. First point which should be considered is preparation of the list of competences before the start of the lesson. If a teacher start, when the teacher start the lesson, he should prepare a list of competences which he is going, which he or she is going to measure. Now the second point which should be taken into consideration is careful construction of the statement for the definite assessment. The construction of the statement should be careful, means we have to do the assessment after this. So these should be carefully constructed. Now the third point which should be taken into consideration while adopting this approach is arrangement of competences in order of increasing difficulty. Here we can say that a student progress step by step means he cannot move to the next competency if he has not achieved the first competency or the previous competency. Now the fourth point which should be taken into consideration is decide the criteria for the assessment. A teacher should decide the criteria of the assessment. Now the fifth one is use of variety of instructional techniques, group activities, multiple methods to attain the mastery. A teacher should use the various instructional techniques and the activities so that the student can attain the mastery over the learning. Now the sixth point we can say teacher can use the text, the media and the other real life materials. Now the seventh is we can allow the student to progress on their own pace. This, this is a very important point which should be taken into consideration while adopting this approach. Means student progress on his own pace. So teacher should allow the student to progress on their own pace or uh, on speed. Now the eighth point is provide immediate feedback to the students to take corrective measures. Now what this point says we should provide the immediate feedback to the student so that he can take the corrective measures, he can do the additional effort to gain the competency. Now the last point which should be taken into consideration is allow the students to continue in the program until he demonstrate the mastery. Means we should allow the student that he should continue the program until he demonstrate the mastery of the learning. Now what is the usefulness of the approach? How this approach is useful to, in the class? First is, it is away from rote memorization. You know what is rote memorization? Rote memorization, just we say in our lay language, this is ratification. This approach keeps the student away from the rote memorization. The second usefulness of this approach is, what is learned today cannot be forgotten tomorrow because a student learn the competency in, uh, in his learning. Now the third is, assessments are continuous and competency based and directly linked with objects of learning experiences. Assessment are continuous in this approach and these are competency based. So this is a very useful approach. Now the fourth point what we can include in this usefulness of this approach is assessment result used for the further improvement. Means whatever assessment we have done, it is useful for the further improvement. How it is useful for the further improvement? Like we can take the remedial coaching for the low achievers and enrichment program for the high achiever. Now what is the remedial teaching? Remedial teaching is some preparatory teaching or preparatory coaching so that a student can achieve the competency. And what are the enrichment programs? Enrichment programs are those programs which inspires the student to do something different. Example we can take here, suppose in the class of a math, if a student is able to do the mathematical problem very easily, then he can prepare some riddle about that concept and then the whole after uh, this, this whole class can try those riddles. Means these are the enrichment program for the high achievers, those who are already good in learning. So the, the assessment results are used for the further improvement here. Now the fifth point which we can include in the usefulness of this approach is learner friendly activities. We include here the learner friendly activities in this approach. Like we can say role play, quiz, magic, puzzles, practice riddle. These are the learner friendly activities. Now the last one is the joyful and interesting teachers. It is obvious that the, the learning is very joyful and interesting and the teaching learning process becomes very interesting. Now if we talk about the limitation of the approach, what, is, what can be the limitation of the approach? The first is high content knowledge of the teacher. In the first point, 
a teacher needs a high content knowledge to apply this approach in the classroom means if teacher is not proficient in the content knowledge then the approach will not work now if you go for the second point about the limitations the learning climate in the school is not equally conducive and not equally effective to optimize learning the third difficulty is that the third limitation is that it is very difficult for the teacher on the part of the teacher how it is difficult for the part of the teacher it is difficult for the teacher to help all the students who are working on their own pace means a teacher a teacher will apply uh, a teacher will do the a teacher will help the students to attain the competences in stipulated period of time so it is very difficult for the teacher to help all the students at the same time now if we talk about the fourth limitation of this approach all the teachers are not competent to provide remedial teaching here we have already talked about the remedial teaching or enrichment programs now what is the difficulty or what is the limitation of this approach that if remedial teaching occurs then all teachers are not competent enough to provide the remedial teaching now the fifth point include that in case of sub competences means when the competences are broken into sub competences then is in case of some sub competences all the details do not find place in the assessment now the last point of the limitation is designing activities and test items is always not practical when we design the activities and all the test items then it is always not practical practicable to design all the activity if this approach is done properly in the classroom then this will be the best approach our best approach of the teaching and learning thank you